Hello! My name is Marius and this is the HPC in a Double Two tutorial on GPU computing with Julia. In the next few minutes I'll show you three different ways to implement the sex perforation on the GPU in Julia. First, by using simple high-level abstractions. Second, by writing a basic GPU kernel. And third, by calling a built-in CUDA library. But first, let's take a step back and remind ourselves of the SexFi problem itself. SexFi stands for Single Precision A times X plus Y, where A is a constant and X and Y are vectors. A straightforward Julia implementation could look like this. Here, we use Julia's broadcasting mechanism and put dots in front of all operations to indicate element-wise multiplication, addition and assignment. To move this sex operation to the GPU, we need to install and load Julia's CUDA interface, which is provided by the package CUDA.jl. This is as simple as adding it to our Julia environment and using CUDA. Afterwards, we can call the function version info to get an overview of our CUDA installations and all available GPU devices. Note that version info will conveniently download and install NVIDIA's CUDA library for us if it isn't already available on our system. To implement SexSpy on the GPU, we need to allocate our data vectors on the GPU as well. This can be achieved by prefixing the regular Julia functions for allocating vectors, such as ones, by CUDA, as shown here. Instead of a regular array, this creates an array of type QArray. By changing the type of an array, we can move it from host memory to GPU memory, or the other way around. We are now in the position to write down our first SexPy GPU code. First, we load CUDA.jl. Then we define constants and allocate the vectors x, y and z on the GPU. Finally, we use broadcasting to implement the element-wise sex operation itself. To ensure that the CPU waits until the GPU has finished the computation, we put CUDA.addSync in front of the sex pie to make it blocking. Note that this code is very similar to the CPU version that we've seen before. Apart from the extra synchronization, the actual sex pipe computation in the last line is literally identical. The fact that the computation runs on the GPU is entirely abstracted away and hidden in the Q-array type of the vectors x, y and z. While this high-level formulation is nice and easy, Sometimes you might want to be more explicit and write a SexPy GPU kernel manually. So, let's do this as well. As a reminder, a kernel is a data parallel function that is launched from the host and executed on the GPU. Conceptually, you should think of this kernel as being called an implicit for loop corresponding to all available GPU threads. The functions threadIDX, blockDIM and blockIDX can be used to access the thread global index, that is, the fictive loop index, which we can then use to implement our element-wise sexpy operation explicitly. Note that since the index i can take values that are larger than the length of our sexpy vectors, we need to add an upper bound check. Once we've defined our GPU kernel, we can launch it from the host with the add CUDA macro. Apart from our kernel function, the latter takes launch configuration parameters as input arguments. In particular, we set threads to the available number of GPU threads per block and choose the blocks argument such that it fits the length of our vectors. And that's it! we've just defined and launched a custom SexPy GPU kernel. Before comparing the performance of our implementations, let us investigate a third way to run SexPy on the GPU in Julia, which will serve as a point of reference in our benchmarks. Beyond providing us with tools to write GPU kernels, CUDA already includes a library called QBLAS, which provides all kinds of linear algebra functionality for GPUs. 
in Julia, we can access these functions through the QDA.QBLAS module. In particular, all XPy operations, that is, for example, SexPy for single position and DexPy for double position, are available through the function QBLAS.XPy for input vectors of the appropriate precision. Hence, we can compute SexPy on the GPU, like so. Note that in contrast to the implementations before, here the input vector y is directly overwritten with the result. To assess and compare the performance of three different SexPy GPU implementations, we benchmark the achieved memory bandwidth for various input vector lengths on an NVIDIA V100 GPU. As can be seen in this figure, all implementations show a performance that comes reasonably close to the theoretical maximum. Importantly, we see that our custom GPU kernel is on par with the built-in QBLAS function, shipped by NVIDIA and implemented in QDAS-C. Furthermore, our broadcasting variant, despite being a high-level formulation, is only slightly behind and achieves a bandwidth in the same ballpark. Alright, let's summarize and recap. In this video, we've discussed three different ways to implement the sex operation on a GPU. High-level broadcasting of CUDA arrays, writing a custom GPU kernel, and calling into NVIDIA's QBLAS library. In particular, we've seen that all variants achieve a similar high performance compared to the theoretical maximum. We hope that this demonstrates the potential of Julia and CUDA.jl for high- and low-level GPU programming. See you in another video.